uploaded in a while. Want to make something of it? It has been a while, but in all fairness, I did record a video for you. It was the one that I promised, the follow-up on the Juliana's perfume changes. Remember that? Um, but it ended up being an accidental collab with Satan. Damn, it is. You know, this is something, and maybe that's what they were running into, because honestly, for a lot of these, I didn't feel the need to buy the full bottle because I had such a good amount of it. So, you know, that's not a good thing for Juliana's either. This is enough where if I do really like it, I... I probably do have to purchase the full bottle. So that was demotivating. So I took a step back. There was also other reasons too. For me, this channel has always been about trying to share my love of perfumes and my passion. It was a creative outlet. And it was starting to become a little too much about researching what was new and hot and following trends. And that's not really what I wanted. But then this trend, this new trend collided with me. So I don't follow TikTok. Um, I follow, you know, I dabble in YouTube and YouTube has made a side hustle out of following TikTok. So, you know, transitive property. Um, sometimes I'm following TikTok and there's this new aesthetic called the mob wife aesthetic. So what exactly is that? Uh, so from what I understand, because I dabble, mob wife aesthetic is about glamour every day, vintage first, you know, just that mature feminine energy, little boss bitch action with it too. Uh, so kind of looking back at, you know, how I dress on a Tuesday in February. Um, I dressed before I decided to film. So I just had to throw on the fur and, and maybe an extra piece of jewelry and, and I was there. Uh, so knowing that this was the hot new trend and I'm already there, I'm an Italian American woman from New York. I'm sorry, I know that's the worst, uh, who grew up at a time where big hair was big and in and fabulous, I had to make a video. Even looking through my perfume collection to decide what was in, to include in this video was a challenge for me to narrow it down because I felt like I had so many that fit this aesthetic. So I had to share, I had to share, and I hope I inspire too. Gotta start with an Italian. Always start with an Italian. I apologize in advance for this pronunciation. If you've been a long time viewer, you'll know that I, I'm a butcher. I'm a butcher. I'm not a mob wife, I'm a mortgage wife. If Ebenezer Scrooge had a wife, famously did not, that would be me. Um, but I, I'm not a, I'm a butcher. The Tulipano Nero by Profumi di Firenze. I am sorry, but I'm not sorry for recommending this. I love this perfume. And I've been wearing it a ton, especially in the cold weather. It is a spicy floral, emphasis on the spice. And it has, to me, a very powdery dry down, um, but not like a talcum powder. And if that sounds confusing to you, good. <laughs> because that's what we're going for. A little bit of mystery, uh, still very feminine, um, classic, spicy, a very well blended perfume. It's, it's amazing, it really is. Uh, it's in inspiration. If it's hard to find, I do apologize for that. I got this at my favorite perfume store, that Pickwick's Mercantile in New Hampshire, but that's pretty obscure. Um, but I do hope that this is readily available because it's such a well-made blended perfume. It has a, a vibe to it that I would say is unique, but it fits all the aesthetic qualities that I've been talking about. To me, so the point of this is everyday glamour. So I would say this is an everyday wear. I don't know if you would you know, look at it and say this is an evening vibe just because of how um, strongly it projects and you know how uh, intense of a scent it is. But everyday glamour means I can say you can wear this every day. To me, I get the, the impression of you know a woman getting ready at the vanity. It has a makeup feel to it. Um, just, it's so pretty. It's so pretty, but deep and sophisticated and glamorous too. So I hope I'm selling you on this one because I, I'll be shocked if you get this one and you don't like it. Number two. Oh no, I'm running, I'm running low on that boss bitch energy. And that's exactly what this one is. If you recognize this bottle, 
it might be a little controversial because again and look at this beautiful bottle but if you're familiar with this perfume and you recognize this bottle you might know that this is the um old <laughs> formulation of Guerlain insolence now reformulations i know they're they're never popular so you might be looking at that going like oh, i can't get that anymore and i haven't tried the new one so i can't necessarily comment on the reformulated one but for this one, I can. So insolence is the name. You know, that's where it is right now. That's the boss B energy. So you might be a mob wife, but you're the one that's in charge if you're wearing insolence. Um, it is a, another floral. It's um, an iris powder, um, but it's also not like a, it's very dry. It's not like a very uh, fresh kind of floral. It's more like a dry, sophisticated floral and it has an edge to it. So it's not a friendly floral either. And I hope I'm not off putting you because it is still extremely sniffable and attractive and sexy. It's just that if you're going to approach someone wearing insolence, you better have something for them. Don't be a waste of their time, bring them some value. You know, this is a good one for work. Um, stare down your coworkers, get what you want, that kind of energy to it. So um, I love this one. It looks beautiful. I'm sad to see how low it is. It's very nicely macerated. It's beautiful in a boardroom. It's beautiful in a nice cold winter day as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's also a nice well blended one. Mine's extra blended because it's macerated, but it's also a very well blended perfume too. So it's another one that's going to kind of defy people being able to kind of pluck out the notes of it, which I love and I think fits this kind of energy too. Um, gorgeous. You know what's in here. You know. Coco Chanel is like the mature perfume to me. And I mean that only in the most positive way. It is an amber rose perfume. And if you're recoiling in horror from that, then I feel sorry for you. <laughs> because this is a classic. And it's, a, you know, a lot of Chanel has that Chanel vibe to it. Um, but it's not, I love what I like about Coco in addition to the maturity is it's a little bit less predictable too. Um, you know, number five is probably, you know, the one that's like, okay, that's the mature one. That's the most, uh, it's iconic. Um, but that's, you know, thought of when you think of the mature one sometimes. And then also Mademoiselle, um, Chance, they have a lot of great ones in the line. Um, but to me, Coco is a standout. It's very sophisticated and it knows who it is. So if you're wearing the Coco Chanel, this is, you are, you know, the matriarch of the mob wives. They look to you for guidance. You know your stuff. You, you stick with the classic, you're in a good lane, you know who you are, but you've also kind of picked one that's not as predictable. Um, it's another beast mode, strong one. And I know I've said every day, every day, I keep sniffing on these perfumes, they're fabulous. Everyday perfume for all of these standouts, but this one does scream a little bit more evening to me, so maybe I'm a little gun shy for her. Um, but, you know, it's, um, I don't get rose. You know, it's like, it's an amber rose perfume. It's a lot more ambery to me. It's another one that's very well blended. Um, it has an old world quality to it. You're not gonna get florals from this. If you get florals from this, I mean, tell me about it, but no, I don't get florals. It's just kind of a very warm, bold, intriguing scent. You know, um, it's, it, yeah, I know who I am. I know what I'm here for. I know what I want. When I tell you that I really had to curate this collection and narrow it down because I had so many that fit the vibe, I was not kidding. I could really go keep going and going, but I want to respect your time. But I did also make you wait a long time for content. So I'm bringing content, but I'm going to do two at once now. Two similar talking points. My, my little shake it up a little bit. Shake it up a little mob wives. Prepare for trouble. All right, you wanna be the fun mob wife, okay? You don't wanna be the one that's always the steady Eddie, the one you go to for the advice. Maybe you're the one that likes a good time. Maybe you're the one that, you know, you still kind of respect some of the rules, but shake it up a little bit. Um, you wanna have some fun. I've got two for you. Tara Mia, which I've talked about, and we'll probably talk about again. And then I don't know, I got a Tom Ford Lost Cherry here and I'll, I'll tell you why. So both of these on paper are gourmands, which I would not normally associate with that mob aesthetic, except for these are not literal gourmands to me. Um, they both have a hint of sweetness to them. 
Um, they've got something that kind of cuts through the other qualities I've talked about in terms of being classic, um, standout scents that are very well blended. That's all true. But with these, I also get a hint of some sweet, a hint of some sweet. Um, that's not too cloying, that's not over the top, and not too immature. They're both still very mature scents to me. So I love Terramia. I think it's so versatile. I think it, it spans a lot of seasons too. I haven't tried this in 95 degrees yet, I don't think, but I still would just to see what that brings out. It's very sweet to me. I think it's the coffee and the vanilla that's making it sweet. Um, but again, just like the other scents, I don't get coffee and vanilla. I just get a sweet note and a well-blended scent. And it is so intriguing. You know, the bottle here, everyone likes to see bottles, right? The one I haven't had my nails done. It's got that mask on it. So that's just to give you that intriguing, sexy vibe. Um, and a hint of that sweetness and mischief. And then Lost Cherry. So Lost Cherry, uh, when I first reviewed this one, and it was a blind smell for me, the first thing I thought of was just like, my cool cousins uh, in the 80s with the big hair, the smoky room, going out for the night. And so when I was making my list, I was like, I have to include Lost Cherry. That was just the mental image that went into my head. And it is a classic. You know, I, I, I think if it gets, is it overpriced? Yeah, that's why I have the travel spray. And it's duped, but it's duped for a reason. So if you get a dupe, um, you know, that, that's all good. That's all good because it's a great scent profile to have. But if you've got that mob wife cash, you know, just burn in a hole in your pocket, in your fur coat, uh, then you can get the, the real deal if you want to. Um, but I don't think you'd go wrong. It's a smoky cherry. Um, again, not like a fresh cherry, like a maraschino cherry to me. I said it was like a Shirley Temple. Um, so it's got uh, smoke and spice and intrigue and then that, that sweet cherry energy too, just to mix it up a little bit to be the, the fun one, the one you got to keep your eye on. All right, that's it. I'm sorry, I gotta go to a thing. I <laughs> uh, hope I've given you enough inspiration to want to join me. I, I really hope so because honestly, I, I hate February and everything about it other than winter perfumes. So if I get to go out in February and freeze my butt off, I'd rather smell a bunch of beautiful, old world, glamorous ladies than, I don't know, road salt. So I really hope that I've inspired you to join me. Please leave your favorite mob wife vibe sent in the comments. Or if you're an actual mob wife, please leave me where your cash is buried. You know, uh, perfume's okay too, but you know, cash is king. That is all for this one. Uh, like I said, I will upload whenever it strikes my fancy, but I did hope you enjoyed this one. And I will see you whenever I see you in the next one.